and she's doing a project on spinal cord injury. So she's going to come talk to a women's group. Um, we have peer working groups that do everything from work on accessibility. So if you've seen better uh, parking in Hamilton, that's because of our peer advocates. And believe me, I have to tell you, if you see curb cuts here in Stevensville, if you see curb cuts done correctly in Hamilton, places like that, that's because people with disabilities went out and said, hello, this is wrong, and worked with the city on it. Um, we also sponsor a group called People First, which is for people with significant developmental disabilities. They're all people that have cognitive disabilities, and they, work, they learn um, <coughs> self-advocacy skills as well as working together. Um, we provide skills training, and I do a lot of that. Um, we also do transition services. And I'm going to talk about first the youth, and then I'm going to talk about older people. I say that I serve people from age 14 to 110, okay, or however old people live. The youth services, we right now are mandated to work with people out of high school 18 to 24 years of age, uh, transitioning to adult life. Because of course what we all know is if you have a disability, whether it's physical, mental, whatever, um, it's harder to transition to adult life. And so we're working with young people. The other thing is we also are working because there's funding through vocational rehabilitation for what's called pre-employment transition services, working with young people in the high school. We teach a class called Transition to Life in the high school in Hamilton um, every other day. A, a days. Um, and it's working on all of those skills that people need for employability that are called soft skills. So in other words, all those communication skills that might get you hired or might get you fired. You know, The hard skills or the job skills, like if you were a, I don't know, a cook, you know, you would bake the cookies, right? But the communication that you have with your coworkers is the thing that, you know, the hard skills can be taught. Mm -hmm. And so do those soft skills that need to be taught. We used to call them life skills, but, but uh, I really think everybody could use that. And then our senior transitions, which I wrote about in the Revalue Republic, um, if you ever saw the section for 55 and older that came out last fall, um, is for, um, older people to, it's called nursing home diversion. So in other words, if you're older and you need to have your house made accessible and you need help figuring out how to do that, we can help. Right now we do not have funds for that. We're hoping to get a grant for our county. They have <coughs> money in Missoula. They got a grant from Missoula. We're hoping we can get a grant in Valley County. Um, if you have, let's say, broken a hip, which is very common, and uh, you need to go home, and you need, you know, you go, what am I going to do? We can help with that. In other words, how can we help people stay in their homes longer as they age? Aging well, okay? Um, so, and I want to just say this, two things. One. Our, our Western Montana and our county has a much higher rate of older uh, people over the age of 60. We have about a 21%, a 21% of our people are over the age of 60. The statewide average is about 14%. And the other thing is, Montana has the highest rate of completed teen suicide in the United States of America per capita particularly among children ages 12 to 14. So this is one of the reasons we've gotten into working with youth and working with older adults, because of the fact that a lot of our youth go undiagnosed, and so there's a lot of that going on, and, and we want to you know, help people with that, um, not 
not go there, not complete that suicide. Maybe come to our class. We had uh, one student in the class, for example, whose goal when we started was to drop out by the time he was 16. He's now saying that he might actually find a job. <coughs> you know, so if we can help people stay in school, great. Um, we have another service called Self-Direct Personal Assistance Services. We do not run that in our office, so I'm not going to talk about that a lot, except to say that adults with disabilities who have long-term care needs and are eligible for Medicaid are able to direct their own personal care. Think about how powerful that is. You get to hire and fire your own personal care. So somebody to get you up in the morning, and I'm gonna just say it frankly, somebody that wipes your ass, you get to tell them what to do, you get to hire and fire them. The home health agencies, they come when they wanna come, right? So that is not, that is something I don't handle, that's handled by our uh, Missoula office. Um, and then we have community services, and that's everything from social change, like it says here, to systems change. So for example, and I can't go when we're teaching class, but next week they're gonna have a big rally in Helena. Because there have been 93 million proposed uh, cuts, I mean $93 million worth of cuts in the state budget. Um, most of that to health and human services. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna have a good old dash march in Helena. Um, and so people from our agency are going, and all of the agencies. There are four centers for independent living in Montana. One based out of Helena is called the Montana Independent Living Project. Uh, one based out of Great Falls is called North Central Independent Living. And one based out of Billings is called Living for Today and Tomorrow, Lift. Now, Living Independently for, for Today and Tomorrow, Lift, um, out of Billings. And we also cover, in Western Montana, we cover Missoula, Lake, Sanders, Mineral, um, Flathead, Bra Valley, and see, I'm going to have to look because I always go, what's the last one? Um, it says it in here. Um, now I'm going to lose it. Uh, anyway, the point is, I just lost the, um, the last one we cover. Oh, here it is. Missoula River Valley, Mineral Lake, Sanders Flathead, Lincoln. I always forget Lincoln. I shouldn't forget Lincoln. <laughs> uh, sorry, Lincoln. But um, we cover those counties. I cover River Valley County. And believe me, drive all the way down to, you drive all the way to the border, right. and you go all the way up to Florence. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so imagine trying to get services to people in all of those communities, and they don't drive, and they have a far more income than the rest of Montana. Um, most of them are on benefits uh, that I see, and so imagine trying to get to those communities and to people in those communities. Most of our people are in imminent danger of homelessness, um, it is what is called, now called couch surfing. So they have an address. I have a consumer, for example, who has a room where she lives, but she barters cleaning services for that room and at any time she can lose it. So we have a very hidden population in terms of our uh, homelessness population, but they are mostly people with disabilities. Um, the vast majority of people I see, as I told you, have multiple disabilities. A lot in our young people, the anxiety levels, the uh, sensory disabilities, the emotional problems that our young people have is incredible. Um, we could run this class that we're doing, we could run it at Hamilton alone every semester and have, right now we have in the one class 13 students, we can have more. But the problem is if you get too many people in one classroom, you're not gonna have the quality uh, of education. 
that we try to provide. And, um, you know, we're not educators, but we go in and we talk about, we do real things. We talk about what it's going to be like living out in the community and what it's going to be like trying to get a job. And one of the things that we're doing is we provide job shadows uh, so they can do a day long, you know, follow you around. So I might be calling some of you and say, would you be interested? Because the student needs, I mean, before they try, they, that way they can try something out before they end up going into something that they hate. So for example, one of the students tried out with, uh, uh, they wanted, they said, oh, I want to work with animals. You know, we have girls that say, I want to work with animals and I want to, you know, be a para educator. You know, they love working with kids. Well, we have one girl, she uh, tried this with a veterinarian. When they went to do the surgery, the girl fainted. <laughs> Hit the floor, bam! So guess what? That was not something <laughs> that she ended up yeah. off the list. But she found that in one day rather than, you know, going to school or doing anything, anything like that. Um, as the county coordinator, basically what I do is anything and everything. Um, like I said, I carry my cards around with me because it seems like everywhere I go, including getting my taxes done, I find meet someone who says, oh, that's what you do? I need help, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I go out to dinner at the frontier, I might be my own business. <laughs> And someone says, oh, oh, where do you work? I think I've seen you. And I go, some hint. And they go, oh, yeah, I need to talk to you about my friend that needs housing. And I'm like, OK, sure. So I feel like I'm never quite off the job. We're quite off the job. It's, it's sort of a calling, if you will. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's interesting. I never have a dull day. I never do the same thing on any given day. Um, and for example, we have a lot of social activities that we do. We now watch movies together at night because we have a set. We have a recreational room called the Refuge. Now it's across town because our office had to move to Fairgrounds Road. It's on Third Street, and uh, but we have them all audio described. An audio description is where it tells you what's going on in the scene. They have a narrator that tells you, but it doesn't interrupt the dialogue. Because I have people with low vision or blindness, and you know what? Everybody, all of the groups that have ever come and watched movies have said, we love this audio description. Could we you know, do this more? And, um, and that's what we found. So, so uh, this past month, our movie was Bridesmaids. If anybody have seen that one, we're all old, so you know. Whatever. Um, so we do a lot of collaborations with other groups, and so I'm just going to tell you a few of the things that I do. I go out in the community all the time. Mickey is my my right hand man, driver. Um, turns out he's fantastic with people uh, that are that have Down syndrome, for example. He's so calm. And not uh, surprised at all. And so uh, he does a lot of work with our young men. And, and I, I hired a young man that, that I was telling you about, our IL specialist who does transitions with youth and benefits, uh, also, and anything else that I get him to do. Uh, because we need more men. Because a lot of our young men that we work with have never had a positive male role model. And so I really, really, really love that we have a man in our office. Not that women aren't wonderful, because you know, I'm, I have to say, the vast majority of our staff are women. You know, but in in all of our counties, but um, all of the county coordinators except one have a disability, and our executive director has a disability. Uh, all of the coordinators of any of our services in Missoula have a disability. Um, basically, it's the one place I could go where disability is an advantage. And that was one reason, if you look at my card, I have, I am a certified 
rehabilitation counselor. I actually have a triple uh, vocational degree. It's in re uh, rehabilitation counseling, mental health and substance abuse, and vocational evaluation. I just didn't go and get my LPC, which is, um, you know, to be more of a, a, a professional counselor. But um, the, the thing is, I chose a, a field and in independent living, most people do this, uh, because my disability would be an advantage. And it is. Um, nobody can come into my office and say to me, oh, but you don't understand. Not a one. Because if they start saying that to me because they can see that I'm in a chair, I can say, well, let me tell you about my invisible disability. And I was covered under every category in the uh, individualized education plan. So, uh, and we go out and do disability awareness presentations in the schools, and I'll be trying to get into Stevensville um, because that's one way that we get in and we talk about uh, people learn a lot and our kids learn a lot. So the last one we did, I went and did it with uh, peers, and. Um, we always talk about our employment, and I think that amazes kids. Um, I have one peer who is an inventor. He has a severe head injury from BMX. He was a professional BMX uh, motor cross race it, racer and um, all kinds of, of trucks and everything. He had sponsors. He missed a jump and basically fell and off the bike in midair and got a head injury. But he then became, because he, he had been trained as a, uh, his father was a gunsmith, he was trained as a gunsmith, and he was also a uh, dye and uh, model maker. So he retaught himself how to do that and now makes accessible products for people with disabilities um, and sends it all over the world. So, um, the people that come up and talk are all people that have been employed and are retired or have done something different once they become a person with a disability. Mm -hmm. So that we dispel the myth that you can't yeah. and, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I, you know, there's so many things to tell you. We are involved and I'm going to ask Belinda, like I said, in the Bitterroot, they have the longest name, and they have changed their name a lot, but it's the Bitterroot Task Force on Housing and Homelessness, or is it Homelessness and Housing? Homelessness and Housing. Okay. Because they've gone on and on about what's the name, and I'm like, just, just do what we need to do. So I'm going to call on Belinda, too. She went to the meeting. There, there are three hour meeting, and I can't always go, but... If you would. Yep, happy to. Um, this past week, uh, Hazel Smith and I, I'm speaking loud this, because I don't have a microphone. I'm just going to make it work. Uh, this past week on Monday, Hazel Smith and I went to this meeting that, yes, it's a three hour meeting, 9 to 12, and you think, oh my gosh, how will they fill it? But it was quite extraordinary. The first thing that impressed me was meeting the coordinator. His name is Tim Peterson, and I got there a little early, we did, and I said hello, and he said, in this one sentence, or a couple of sentences, he said, I'm Tim Peterson, um, I am a retired Marine. Not too many people retire as Marines, and if you're a Marine, you're tough and you get things done, and it just said volumes about this guy. Great smile, great personality. But he said, I went into the Marines at 19, I came out, what, plus 20, 39, and I just feel like I, our wording, have a calling to do this. I heard about this opportunity, it's a, not a one, but two year grant um, to focus on these issues in our county. So I was impressed with him from the get-go because he's got a lot of energy, he's focused, he's got an amazing background, he knows how to get things done, very people-oriented, and it's all about building consensus. So from the get-go, I thought, oh, this is in good hands. And I was happy to hear their grant was not one year, but two years, because it takes a while for things to, to flow. 
So then the meeting began. They 